Is this the end of the real estate agent? Now, I know a lot of you might be a little upset about that, but just hear me out. So a lot of you may or may not remember the travel agent, a little bit like the real estate agent. So back in the day, we used to use travel agents. Now, of course, you guys might think I'm crazy because you can go on any of the airlines or any of the hotels and just book online. So that's what's happening now. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the real estate disruptors. So right now, there's a new disruptor that has entered the real estate market. Today, we're gonna look at a fairly recent arrival, the iBuyer. iBuyer is a real estate company that will buy your home, make some cosmetic repairs, and then sell it. Open Door, OfferPad, and Zillow are just a few of the iBuyers who are changing the way home buying and selling works. Right now, iBuyers have just gotten their foot in the door, but it could be the tip of the iceberg. Be sure to stick around to the end when I get into the huge gamble that iBuyers are making right now. As always, I'll provide show notes for this video in the link below, and be sure to like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications so you don't ever miss our future videos or live streams. Okay, so iBuyers are a pretty new phenomenon, and that has been building in popularity. Open Door was the first company to start iBuying in 2013, when it launched itself as a place where homeowners could sell their homes without hiring a listing agent. And that's what I'm talking about. It also allowed sellers to sidestep the whole process of open houses and negotiating with potential buyers. Sellers could just accept Open Door's offer and then start getting ready to move. More recently, other companies like Zillow, Offer, Knock, and OfferPad have entered those arenas. How it works is that a seller will go to an iBuyer's website enter their address and fill out a questionnaire about their home. After that, they receive an offer within 24 hours, which is of course based mainly on neighborhood comp. If the seller likes the offer, the next step is that the iBuyer sends an inspector to go over to the property. At that point, the seller can still back out of the offer until after the final walkthrough. The closing period is typically around 60 days or less and can even be as quick as one week. After the seller has moved out, the iBuyer will either hire a third-party real estate agent to sell the property or use one of their own in-house sellers. Currently, iBuyers are only operating in some markets and their preference is for newer homes. By buying homes that only need cosmetic repairs, iBuyers can boost their odds of a quick resale. The iBuyer business model is driven by fast and easy flips with a focus on recently built homes or condos priced between $100,000 and $500,000. Before the pandemic, iBuyers were gaining traction. During one three-month period in 2019, iBuyers snapped up nearly 7% of all homes in the Raleigh-Durham region of North Carolina and more than 5% of all transaction in Phoenix. They have mainly focused on markets with a lot of new construction where home prices have climbed in recent years. This map that I'm showing you now shows us where iBuyers are operating. While these home prices are from a couple years ago, that last column shows us that iBuyers have been honing in on markets that are still affordable but are growing fast. So if I'm looking to sell, what are the advantages of using an iBuyer? Like we said at the top, there are no home showings when you hire an iBuyer. You don't need to make any repairs and can sell your home as is. iBuyers are cash buyers. You don't need to worry about any financing or any appraisal contingencies. You're able to pick a closing date that works for you. Now all that sounds good, but there are also some major drawbacks to consider iBuyers offer you a slightly below the market value for your home. There are higher fees and closing costs, anywhere from 6 to 12%, well above the traditional agent's commission, which is typically around 5%. You cannot negotiate on the price. It's a take it or leave it proposition. Before the pandemic, iBuyers had been growing rapidly in popularity. In the third quarter of 2019, the four big iBuyers snapped up a nice small percentage of all homes sold in the United States, according to research done by Redfin. But by the third quarter of 2020, when the real estate prices were growing in leaps and bounds, that share dropped, obviously, to a lower percentage. So what happened? Very likely, 
Sellers realized that the convenience of iBuyers meant that they had to sit out on the bidding wars that were happening all around them. When you work with an iBuyer, you get one offer and that's that. In the slower paced housing market of 2019, sellers were willing to accept less for certainty of a quick sale. Now though, many homeowners want the multiple offers that you get in a traditional sale. iBuyers still offer the advantage of paying homeowners all cash for their house, but in a seller's market like we have right now, that may be the only major enticement iBuyers can offer. Despite the dip in popularity of the iBuyers, I would not dismiss them as a flash in the pan iBuyers are determined to stick around, even if that means losing money in the process. That's right. iBuyers are currently operating at huge losses. Zillow Offer and Open Door are the two largest iBuyers. Each have released statistics that they turn a gross profit of around $17,000 per house. But that figure doesn't factor in the cost of its employees, the overhead, and the advertising and the marketing. Zillow Offer shelled out about $266 million for overhead expenses in 2020 alone. When the cost of operations is factored in, Zillow Offer and Open Door are operating at huge losses to the tune of tens of thousands of dollars per home. In the fourth quarter of 2020, Open Door was operating at a net loss of over 100,000 per home. So why are Zillow, Open Door, and all the other iBuyers staying in the game when they're taking such large losses? For now, the reason is simply because they can afford to. These are billion dollar companies committed to playing the long game. In the meantime, Zillow and the competitors will most likely rely on upselling the current customers, mortgages, and other things as part of the attempt to stay in the black. Ultimately, these iBuyers are trying to get through this period because they see major disruption on the other side, as we've been talking about in all of my videos. They are also betting on being able to do enough volume business to get them back into the black. Now, coming full circle back, is this the end of the real estate agent? The CEO of Knock has said that by 2029, he projects that half of all real estate sales will be handled by iBuyers. I don't know how likely that is, but I certainly wouldn't rule it out either. Thanks for listening. Until next time.